we focused on you know one trajectory of the system one state so now we want to broaden our scope we want to see what happens to a neighborhood our eventual goal is to classify all possible motions of a given dynamical system and uh, describe how important relative to other motions is any particular motion. To do this, you know, we have to broaden the scope from just one point moving. And as you'll pretty soon realize, you know, this just looks like some discussion, but actually it's very fundamental. By going from studying what happens to one initial state to studying what happens to a distribution in initial states, we're doing something very physical, which is to say that we never know any state with infinite precision. Mathematicians might know it sometimes, but in science, you know, applied dynamical systems, there's always some uncertainty about initial states. There's also uncertainty about laws of nature. You know, we pretend that Newton's law is immutable, eternal, etc., but it's not quite true. We know that all our laws are approximate and, you know, good approximation, certain level of approximation. So now a weird thing that will happen in this course, which I don't really understand, we will only say that we don't understand the certainty in the states we are measuring, but we'll pretend that the laws are immutable. So we won't have to smear the laws, take a distribution of laws. And for some reason that works. So, you know, I'm not sure why, but it works. Toward the end of the course, we might even smear out the laws and show that in the limit of determinism, this, this works. Now, if you understand this and a few things will happen in this course, you will understand foundations of statistical mechanics. Because so far we have taken a state space and we have fibered it in a fiber bundle of trajectories, Lagrangian spaghetti. And uh, every spaghetti has, you take a point on it, just a label. It says, you know, this is 17 spaghetti. This is what it is at time t0 or something. But it's really only a label. The object is the whole invariant orbit. And uh, that orbit has passed in future. So, you know, a great puzzle of determinism is why is it if you know everything about past and future, we cannot see future as in a mirror of the past. You know, why is it that we can go back and forth? The moment you start talking about neighborhoods, you'll realize in very simple dynamical systems, you will understand that you cannot go back. You know, you can go back for finite time. It's called Yapun of time or something, and you cannot go beyond Yapun of time. And you just can't do it. And the reason why you can't do it is the same why you can't beat the housing bubble, the stock market, etc. Exponential growth is unsustainable. And what's very typical of dynamical systems is that all the errors uh, generically tend to ex grow exponentially. That means in finite time, no matter how many computers you have, you won't be able to predict. And, you know, you will never be able to predict whether beyond, let's say, 10 days, no matter how accurate your measurements are, just because it's intrinsic even to three degrees of freedom and not 10 to 24 like we think in statistical mechanics or some such number. So this is going to be all totally innocent, but it's actually a fundamental shift. What we have in mind is big state space of infinitely many states and you take a neighborhood and you know you can think of it as the neighborhood defined by the fact that your initial state in your experiment is prepared by accuracy to one percent or something. You can think of it as some Gaussian uh, and you have points in this neighborhood and the one we have studied so far is at the center of the neighborhood. So there was x0, our initial, the label of the Lagrangian trajectory, or our initial point. And then we went someplace in time, and we arrived to xt. 
sometime later. But now we will sprinkle the neighborhood with a whole flock, a swarm of neighbors. And what's you know, specific to determinism is that none of this spaghetti will ever cross any other spaghetti. They're all unique. So they will all go and they'll do something. So there'll be somebody here doing this, somebody here doing that, somebody here doing something else. And at time t, the whole neighborhood, if you just smear it out and look at it as a picture, will be something that look quite different than what you started with. Because it turns that no linear flow deforms neighborhoods. It depends where you are in a state space, you know, how you move. And uh, the neighborhood, even a very small one, after some finite time sufficient, the large will be visibly distorted neighborhood.